everybody and welcome back to our show from this corner TV I'm your host and producer Marilyn Dayton and the reason I'm here today is to remind you that there are many people like myself uh, who are here to help you with both your personal and professional lives and also to inform you that there are organizations that offer you ways to help those you care about. Uh, one of the reasons I said that is that I got my pin today, which is a blue puzzle piece. And that is um, because I'm working on a fundraiser idea for Autism Speaks. Uh, if you remember, they were with us in June of this past year. And um, th it's, it's just wonderful to be able to give back to organizations such as that. They are celebrating 10 years this year, as of February. And, uh, and it's just a, a wonderful thing to know that whatever your, the people that you care about, whatever is going on, you can, you can find help, you can find information. It's the information world now. We can find out, I just ordered something from China that I haven't been able to find in this country or anywhere else, just a little thing. And um, the Chinese are the only ones that make it. And I thought, oh, okay, I gotta do what I gotta do, right? So I pushed the button and how easy is that? So, at any rate, today we have a, another wonderful show for you. And it's kind of fun because I got to meet these people a year ago. Um, and they're from Old Saybrook, uh, Old Saybrook Middle School. And uh, they do an event there that you really are going to want to know more about, uh, the Safety Wellness Day. And so we have with us today, we have the event originator, Terry Savino. And then we have Mandy Ryan, who's the OSMS principal. And then we also have Maureen Copas. Did I say it right? You did. Hi, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> and she's the one that's organizing it this year. And uh, in a real big learning curve here, huh? It's a huge learning it's curve. It's a huge yeah. learning curve. Yeah. Well, let's start at the beginning. Okay, and let's talk about when this idea came up and where it came from. Okay, so I guess I have to look at you, mm -hmm. Terry, right? Yes. And ask you about that. So tell us the story. Sure. So in 2010, the PTO was looking for a chairman of the Safety Day. The previous two years, they had a program that was a one hour program about the awareness of carbon monoxide poisoning. And that was started because one of the middle school staff members had some carbon monoxide exposure in her home where actually some of her family members did not make it and the other family members actually had harm. And um, so this was started for them originally. So in 2010, they were looking for a new chairperson. So I volunteered and I asked the principal at that time, Mike Rafferty, if I could sort of blow it up and make it an all day program and have safety and wellness because it's, it's really important to educate on carbon monoxide poisoning and we still have two grades that get that education, but there's a lot other important safety wellness things like concussion and, and fitness and exercise and um, healthy relationships that we thought it was important that the middle school kids hear. So that's how it began. Um, because I work at Middlesex Hospital and we have, I have fellow um, peers that can come and teach some of these programs, I knew that I'd be able to pull together about 50 different speakers. Some are from Middlesex Hospital, but also from the community. We get great community support from the local fitness centers, from the fire department, the ambulance, the police department. So we've been fortunate um, to have people come and present. So you took a big risk by say, stepping up and saying, how about a whole day and I'll organize it and contact everybody and pull it together. I did. <laughs> I did. Um, my husband Vito has also helped out for, for the past four years um, and it definitely, we had a committee. Um, we worked very closely with the middle school principals and um, Deb Pegnatero from the library was sort of our, our school contact. Um, it, it, took, it took a team, but we worked really close together and the focus was really about the kids and what information we brainstormed about what topics would be important for that age group and we all worked together and we evaluate it um, every year to see if there's anything we can improve upon. So it's been great. Wow. And so you're graduating, so to speak, <laughs> yes. into the high school uh, PTO world and um, Maureen is going to be uh, taking care of it this year. Um, 
Before we talk more about the, the history and that kind of thing, what are some of the things that you learned this year that, uh, that you didn't know that were going to be a part of this event? I didn't, I didn't realize how many times I'd have to text and call Terry <laughs> to see <laughs> if I'm doing it right. And, and I am a nurse, uh, a bedside nurse. I work at uh, Yale New Haven Hospital in the pediatric ICU. So I don't have any business sense like Terry does. She's in a management position. So she comes from a very different type of mind and background. So I'm trying to learn the business angle and put it all together. Um, so it's really not me doing it this year. It's Terry doing it along with me. And then hopefully next year, Terry can um, really hand it off. Um, last year I observed. This year we're doing it together. and. Um, but it, it was a major undertaking by her, and especially now that I'm kind of in the thick of it, realize the time and the effort that she put into developing and kind of growing it over the last couple of years. You know, one of the Very things impressive. that I noticed last year was uh, the huge amount of involvement from everyone from parents, teachers, librarian, school nurse, principal, um, and all of the people that came to talk to the kids. And it was just, I had never been to anything like that before, and I thought, every school should do this. And yes, it's a lot of work, but once you have kind of a template of, uh, and a process, um, then it seems like people could take that and make it their own. What are some of the things that you've seen happen as a result of this program that you started? We've had wonderful feedback and there's probably other things that have happened that we're not even aware of. Um, we had one student who recognized stroke symptoms on his grandfather and called 911 and the ambulance took him to the emergency room and they gave them the medication that dissolves the clot and he was able to survive his stroke um, without any residual at all. Um, we've had one student who um, did a, who had an obstructive airway and his brother did the Heimlich maneuver on him. He was choking on a, a piece of meat and there were no other adults around so he saved his brother. Um, we had a teacher, we had a presentation about concussion and that particular day her son had stayed home because he had a headache and he had a head injury from his sport event the night before and after hearing the concussion presentation she had concerns that her son had a concussion so she went home and brought him to the doctor and in fact he he did have a concussion and there may be other cases out there um, that we're not even aware of but but we do know that we're making a difference with these kids I, I had heard some of the stories last year and which just reinforced to me this would make a great TV show. We're going to have to have these people on so they can tell their story about not just the event itself and how to coordinate it with the school and administration and everything, but how to get the community involved and then the results because I think that's more important than anything. It's great when you have everyone pulling together to make something happen. I know I've been there. Um, but to actually have it save lives, because that's what it did. The story you just told me, both, you know, those are, when a child can save a life, that's significant, that's huge. So let's back up a little bit here. Um, you said there was a safety program before you stepped up and said you wanted to do a full day? Yes, and the focus was on carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, they did make sure that all the students in the school system had a carbon monoxide in their homes. So the PTO um, provided um, carbon monoxide detectors to those families, and I believe the fire department donated mm -hmm. some as well. So that was either two or three years, and then they were looking for a new chair, and I took it over. Um, one thing that we've sure done the, the last two <laughs> years is the end of the day we've had an all school performance in the gym which I think has made a really great um, difference in the program because the kids they're like sponges the programs are interactive and they're just taking all this information in but by the time you get to 1 30 in the afternoon they're exhausted mm. they've, they've heard so much different information so two years ago we had the Harlem Rockets come in and there was a, a basketball presentation last year we had BMX bikers come in and talk about the importance of bike safety and helmet and um, did a show for them so I think that's 
really made it a wonderful sort of closing of the, the day. Yeah, when I heard about that last year, um, I had to go somewhere else. Otherwise, I would have, you know, gone in and peeked to see what it was all about. It sounded really, you know, really great. Um, the cooperation of the PTO and administration of the school. Um, how does this work? I mean, some PTOs, they have some trouble, you know, breaking through to, especially when you're talking about committing a whole day. How does, how does that work? <laughs> well, I think it starts with the relationship that the school has with the PTO in the first place. We have a very strong PTO that's supportive of all of the things that the school wants to do. So when they come to you and are asking to do something that's going to benefit children, you are always open to them because they've given so much. It just so happened that this turned out to be a wonderful event that, you know, they also, the PTO sponsors it financially as well. So the school's commitment is really about the day of instruction, but it's a day of instruction for children. It's just not the typical day of instruction for children. Right. So it's, it's important for our kids. It really is. And, um, what what is it that changed this year? I mean, other than the fact that you're you're trying to help and 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 train Maureen to, what are some of the things? Do you have some new things this year that are going to happen? Yeah, so we've brought in a couple new programs this year when certain speakers can't come back because they can't make the commitment to a full day. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing a piece on. Um, a presentation on Lyme disease and detection and prevention because of where we live. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing um, one on mindfulness, so some of the simpler things, um, targeting more, I think, to the seventh graders. Um, doing healthy, healthy, relation <coughs> we're healthy doing, yeah. relationships um, and dating violence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the older kids. And, and then we have a local um, attorney's office, um, Sashman Shapiro in New London. Um, Mike Blanchard, a lawyer there who does, um, does a lot of internet um, law, mm -hmm. is coming to speak to our students about inter in internet safety and the, the consequences of behaviors and what the implications of their usage on the internet and social media can be. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm sure our viewers right now are going, I really wish that our school district could do something about that. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll talk more about that. But first, um, I would like to hear, even though I was there last year and I saw a lot of the involved uh, people, um, I'd like to hear kind of a, a list of who is there and what they, what they contribute. Who would like yeah. to? Well, each grade gets a fitness activity. So for the fourth and fifth grade, it's the um, phys ed teachers in the school that do that. But we have the Valley Shore YMCA there. We have Shoreline um, Fitness there. We have Anytime Fitness there. We make sure the kids wear sneakers on that day because everybody gets a phys fitness activity. We have instructors um, from the school system. We have food and nutrition that comes and speaks. The Old Saybrook Youth and Family Services um, have several presentations that they do. This will be the third year that we do CPR and airway obstruction for all the, all the grades, and that's sponsored by the Old Saybrook Police Department. So the kids will walk over to the park and rec, and that gym, there's probably 30 mannequins there where the kids are actually doing their hand, hands-on mm -hmm. compressions. Um, we have CTO that comes, um, and the other boating company um, to talk about boating to talk about boating safety. Um, Lifestar comes. They've been able to make it the last three years, um, so they're there at at the lunchtime. The kids can actually go in. Lifestar, the fire department, and ambulance are there, and some ATV vehicles for safety that the police use. They get to the children get some hands-on experience with them. They get to you know get in and see what the the first responders get to work with. Um, Middlesex Hospital does several presentations. They do uh, stroke education, they do skin cancer, um, they do a nutrition one. This year I'm actually going to be doing hand washing and talking about the importance of hand washing. Um, yoga one year for stress relief, right? You yep. The yoga yeah, we have that again this year. Mm -hmm. But I have to say one of the really impressive things, because I 
you know, my kids had gone through it and I got the flyer at home and I read it and they talked about it. But when I actually went to the school last year and I walked over to the rec center where the police department was um, putting on the CPR program to see a whole grade of 90 to 120 kids being taught the very basics of CPR just by pure exposure. You don't know when one of them are going to be with a grandparent or a parent or wherever they might be. And if they can just initiate the basic CPR, just the breathing and the compressions mm -hmm. until somebody else can get there. I, I was really, to me, that was just mind-blowing last year that Terry had organized that and that the police department, I mean, they're all given up a day. Um, yeah. And they're in there with the kids and the kids love it and they do it to music and, you know, they make it fun so that the kids want to learn. And um, I thought that was a really a, such a great addition to the day. And, and, we're, and we're not just talking about someone coming and talking. We're actually talking about there's an ambulance they can climb on and look at. There's these, these bikes. Um, there was a boat, too, last year, wasn't there out yes, front? Yes, Ocean Performance yeah, and Seato both bring their boats, and they talk about boating safety and life preservers, and the kids can look at the boats and see all the emergency equipment that they have there, have on those boats. And, you know, another cool thing, last year, the woman next to me, who's an optician, um, Dr. Lombardi. Lombardi. Yeah, yeah. Lombardi. yeah. Um, she was, she had some, uh, some measuring tools. She had the kids look at, I mean, mm -hmm. it was, and I was after her, so they were all late coming over to me, which was fine. It was really interesting. They were getting their eyes kind of tested and things. I thought that was, wow, that is really great. You know, um, and one of the kids, well, actually several of them said, guess what my eyes are like? I just found out that I've got 20-20 vision. wonder what that means. <laughs> and then you know, it was just so great. You know, and they had the little slip in their hands and stuff. And they get all these handouts, you know, that they all put in their little bags. Everybody's got a bag. And then I guess they're encouraged to take this home and show them to mom and dad and talk about them and that kind of thing. Um, and I'm sure our viewers right now are going, oh, wait a minute, you're talking about all these kids in a school. How do you organize it? How do you schedule uh, so that small groups are going at a time to do this? You know, and I saw that the matrix and everything last year and I thought, okay, that's a major job right there, organizing that. That's all Terry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's actually yeah. very easy. It's okay. done by, um, by homeroom. So we rotate the kids by the homeroom teacher. And when we first plot it out, I color code each. We use an Excel file. And I color code each speaker. So when I line them up for grade, I make sure I don't have two colors in each grade to make sure that we haven't overlapped. And one thing that we do ask all presenters that the, is that the presentations are interactive because we really want the kids to be moving and to make it a, a fun learning day for them. So that's one thing as each year goes on, we try to stress and, and make them as interactive as possible. And it's, it's interactive. It's yes. The kids seem to love it. They really, really, they were very into it. And know? the teachers love it. I mean, they thank us for having this day. And they do, the teachers appreciate it and they'll come sometimes later on in the year and they look at what the needs of the certain cohorts of students are and they'll say, you know, I really think we should do something on Wellness Day on such and such. If it, you know, healthy relationships is one that they really talked about and said this is really applicable to our kids today and they'll come up with topics based on what they think the need is for that group. So they're always aware that this is there and this is a great opportunity to, to teach our kids about things that are really relevant to them in their lives. And healthy relationships, you're talking about, uh, for instance, how to deal with bullies or? Um, I think the focus of this particular presentation is about your your personal relationship. So healthy relationships in terms of um, balance of control, whether it be with friends, whether it be with a, uh, someone that they're dating, but really looking at how you're presenting yourself and maintaining your own sense of strength mm -hmm. and respecting other people's sense of strength as well. Because if they can do that, then they can navigate later on any of those relational aggressions that come up. But it's really about those more personal relationships. At Which this I think point. is great because 
I don't know about you, but middle school is a tough time <laughs> in anybody's life. And I'm watching now with my grandkids, they're both in middle school. And there's just so much drama going mm -hmm. on because you're going, you're basically going from being a child to um, a teenager during those years and it's a huge transition you're you're trying to deal with your emotions you're trying to figure out who you are and who you want to have as friends and if somebody hurts your feeling um, it, it, it may be the first time that it's ever happened to you and you don't know what to do so mm -hmm. something like this uh, building and handling healthy relationships I think is a great mm -hmm. idea I think it's Wonderful. So it's almost like I wish I was a kid again. <laughs> well, there's a lot of, I think a lot of the emotional and social needs of our kids in middle school, just like you say, I mean, that's really where their biggest time of growth is, other than the first two years of life, cognitively, socially, emotionally, um, and their social world is their world. And then there's other uh, mental health issues that come to play that really have had, I guess, some more subtle positive effects. We do things on eating disorders and there's been students who have reported some concerns about other students and we've been able to intervene um, about self-injurious behaviors, whether it be suicidal ideations or just self-injurious behaviors. They've come to us with that and we've been, allowed, we've been able to get counselors to support and get the mental health that they need. I mean, I think society continues to put more demands on our kids and there's always more mental health demands um, for them. So it's a great way to expose them to things that they might not realize other children are suffering with or dealing with. It, it mm -hmm. kind of makes it safe for them to come out and say, wait, this affects me too, or a friend. Exactly, mm -hmm. because it's, um, especially when you have something going on and you're not quite sure who to talk to or what to do about it. And a lot of times we just bury it and then it just grows and grows and, and uh, outgrows what it could have been as far as being handled and mm -hmm. taken care of. And we want our schools to be a healthy place for our youngsters and a fairly safe place, as safe as we can keep them. And um, there's just, I mean, it's a different world today and we have to be cognizant of the fact that it is a, a different world. And you're right, there's just so much stress on these young mm -hmm. people. And of course, when I think about when I was going to school a long time ago, there's so much more to learn now. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It's the academic demands have increased substantially. And then a few things have been changed, like the new math. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we should talk about that. <laughs> 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 because whenever... Um, my grandson needs help with math. I go, okay, talk to daddy or mommy about that because <laughs> granny doesn't know the new math. I don't know how to do that <laughs> because he tried to show me once and I went, okay, I, I don't get it. <laughs> so. You're not alone. <laughs> yeah, that's stood out. But the, the thing is I also get the, the uh, I hear that, you know, once you understand it, it makes life easier f to figure out math. And I thought, okay. All right, um, <laughs> I have a calculator, that's good enough. <laughs> so here we are talking about a school that is offering, uh, what I love is the commitment of the children because they're enjoying this and they're learning it. The parents that are involved, that volunteer and that organize it, the staff, the administration of the school, and all of these community entities and people that commit a day to teaching these, these young people something so vital that, and, and when you're young, you absorb like a sponge. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it stays with you. I can remember learning uh, how to count to five in Japanese when I was seven. I never forgot it. <laughs> Didn't use it that often, but I never forgot it. And so um, I have to, number one, compliment you, and number two, ask you what you would suggest to the people that are watching. Um, think about this and, and let's see if we can give them some, t some tips and techniques about number one, um, improving the relationship between the parents and the organization and school. Number one, so that you can team up to help the kids. Always put the kids first and something like that. I think every school should have a program like this.
and then she called the Terry Savino dead. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a perfect that name. Would be a good name. Yes, Very appropriate. I think it would. It really would. Um, and so when we come back in a few minutes, we're going to take a little break here in a minute. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that, how we can encourage others to maybe take a step forward and talk to your school um, about even just starting maybe on a small scale to do something like this, okay? And uh, so we're going to take a little break and uh, we'll be right back in about two minutes, so stay tuned. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Up, college is hard. Down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up here. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. My name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? So we've got some things that we're going to be sharing with you on the second half of the program, which is you've been watching these, these three representatives who are representing a team effort of, they say it takes a village, <laughs> it does, and, um, and, and doing something this important for uh, our young people. I it's, I'm encouraging you to listen, take notes, get out that pen and paper like I always tell you to, and take some notes because this is really important. Our children are our future. And to teach them safety and wellness is just so very important. All of the things that we've been talking about. And so let's go back to, um, to when Terry took that stepped forward and said, let's make a day of it. So, <laughs> you're talking about a lot of planning and organizing. How long did it take you to put together a day rather than a couple of hours? In the beginning, I'll be honest, it takes a lot of hours. Um, I, would, I would recommend you start with brainstorming get a committee together at your school, do some brainstorming about what possible topics might be for your students, and then really look to your community. Who do you have in your community that can come in and be a speaker to you? There's you know, fitness centers, there's um, hospitals, nurses, there's, there's VNAs, there's fire departments, ambulance. Lifestar has been great. Um, there's safe kid organization that has come in the past. And really look and see what you have available to your, in your community and even in your school mm -hmm. system. Old Saybrook Middle School has many teachers that will present. They may present to a different grade than they actually teach in, but you know, their school counselors um, will present. So really do an evaluation of what you currently have within your school system and even get some kids involved in your committee. What do the kids want to learn about um, wellness? What are their fears? Mm, that's important. Yeah. 
Um, okay, don't get scared, people, you know, about what we're talking about, because it's worth it to make a commitment and spend a lot of work to get something going, because the second time it's easier. It's the first time when you're putting the, all of this together. So um, how long did it take you, um, and when did you start? We st this first I started time. in the fall. Um, the way that the PTO at Old Saybrook Middle School runs, they sort of have a calendar of when events are. So in the fall, they try to organize, or sometimes even in the summer, mm -hmm. who's going to be the chairs for these different activities. So it was in the fall um, that, I nom that I volunteered to take this on. And the first year, we actually had it in February. And then the second year, it was in February. And unfortunately, we had a snow day. Oh boy. And it had to be canceled. Mm. So um, it was that point that we recommended that we not do it in February. Can you imagine if it was in February of this year? Oh, that would have been good. <laughs> so we recommended that it be an April event mm -hmm. because so much work and planning goes into this event. We had to reschedule it that year for the yeah. following week, and it, it was very difficult. So definitely pick a month that's not a snow mm -hmm. month there, or you're concerned about snow days. Okay. And then, um, what's the first step to organize the kinds of activities that you wanted to have? Organize the activities and then identify who could possibly be a speaker. You know, reach out to your community hospitals, to your local organizations, to, um, you know, your fitness centers. And everybody that we have as a speaker, we don't pay any of them. They're giving up their day to come and help educate our students. No, you shouldn't pay anybody to do something. It, this yeah. is an investment it's a in community. our community. Yeah. 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 Um, what is it that, that you discovered that you then changed the second year? I mean, other than the date, <laughs> of course. One thing we changed, um, like I said earlier, was we requested it be more interactive. Don't just show a PowerPoint because the kids, they get that in the school day. Yeah, so make it interactive. Yeah. Make it a, a Jeopardy game. Make it stations. Um, Maureen's daughter, when she heard I was doing hand washing, wanted me to do it in the seventh grade because she had so much fun when she did that in the year <laughs> in the fifth she grade. Re she remembered it, you know, three, oh, four yeah. years later. And she's like, oh. Can she present that again? Um, so it's more the, the more hands-on you mm -hmm. can be to mm -hmm. make it fun and you learn why you're having fun and then it's not s a stressful day for yeah. the kids as yeah. it might be sitting going to math, science, and English, mm -hmm. you know. So just to kind of break it up a little bit for them. We have to remember these are children. Mm -hmm. These yeah. are children. And they do need that little bit of fun yes. during the day. Um, matter of fact, was, I think there was a, my granddaughter, she's 14 now, but last year she was telling me that there was a study done, I love it when the kids tell you these things, there was a study done that if you did indeed have recess during the day, that it relaxed your brain and then you could go back and be focused mm -hmm. again in your studies the rest of the day mm -hmm. or something like that. And, and it's true, it's right? True. So they just have a new state statute that kid children kindergarten through fifth grade are required to have at least 20 minutes of physical activity a day but it ends at fifth grade so but so now every school has to provide that for their students in the middle of the day i think another key component is also keeping the the sessions at an appropriate time limit and terry's done a great job of that because our adolescents all children but our adolescents in particular have very limited attention spans mm -hmm. and so to <laughs> so to keep them in something that's manageable and hands-on that's when they're getting optimal learning and she's done a good job of planning she's that piece. also switched it so that you don't get the same material mm -hmm. you don't get concussions every year you don't get um, sun safety every year so every year you're exposed to some old things, but some new things as well. And so mm -hmm. that kind of keeps the kids a little bit more interested and yeah, a little I bit more vested in the day. I hadn't thought about that, yeah. Um, because they don't want to have the same thing again, because I already learned it last year. So yeah, she's totally has it organized that but that's not easy. getting that's that easy. is that okay. Is See, the speakers yeah. stay with the same grade every year and the kids will move on. So that mm -hmm. way they're not oh. getting the same material. Now there's two grades that get carbon monoxide, but each presenter does it a little differently. So they'll get it 
in fourth grade and they get it again in seventh grade, but it's presented differently with different speakers. We, a couple grades get concussion. Um, Wildwood Pediatrics has been a speaker from the beginning, so they do the fifth grade students, and Connecticut Brain Injury Alliance does the seventh grade students on concussion. So they may get it again, but it's a completely different presentation. And they make it fun. Wildwood makes a brain out of jello. So, oh, that's cool. You know, they, they really make it fun for the kids. Mm -hmm. And Terry's also done an excellent job of making sure that the topics are developmentally appropriate. So not only in the delivery of it, like the Jello for the younger children, but really for looking at what are the topics that are appropriate for which age group. And that can be difficult at times, oh, especially yeah. when our school spans grade four through eight. So it's a, it's a big span, and you really need to make sure you're targeting the appropriate topics for the right grade level. We have one speaker that I actually graduated high school with who took a chance a few years ago and told his story of how he got addicted to drugs after having surgery mm -hmm. and how what he lost over that period and how he's come now to share his story with people for the kids to learn. I mean, when I first sat in his session and heard him tell his story, I had tears in my eyes because this was a man who in high school was in the top of our class but he took that chance mm -hmm. and he comes back every year and tells his story and it's, wow. it's powerful for mm -hmm. those kids I mean I, I'll never forget one class he asked the kids to raise their hand how many of you know somebody who's an alcoholic and some kids will raise their hand and then um, he'll say how many of you know anybody that d does drugs or has problems with drugs and more kids will raise their hands and then he was an attorney so he will say how many of you kids know an attorney and he will introduce himself as having been an attorney and then um, he will say, how many of you know somebody that's all three of these? And usually no hands go up. And he'll say, you can all raise your hands because I'm all three. And the mouths drop. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, he's, it's just a very powerful presentation. That, and that's done to the eighth graders. Right. So it's the older kids that are getting that information that need to know you have a responsibility to make the right choices. And that's what he tells the kids. It's all about wow. the choices you make. Wow. I'd like to hear that story. <laughs> yeah, he's powerful. He's very good. Oh, the that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, this is the way you reach the kids, mm -hmm. you know? Um, make it a special event, number one, um, and organize it the way you have, and have this, I mean, I, I, it still boggles my mind when I think of last year, I just, I probably walked around with my mouth open just going, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> because it is. It's absolutely amazing. Think how much better off your school children are that live in your community because of this event. And this is something that you would wish that other communities could do and should do. And yeah, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's just so worthwhile. It's, um, it's the least we can do for our kids, you know? It really is. I'm a fan, can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the other things that, that you would like to put out there for people to think about? Um, in maybe starting small, if, if they say, I want to do this, but I can't do the whole day, you know, because it's like, I don't know how to do it. But what should I do first? What should I think first? Uh, what would be the best way to introduce this to our school district and say, um, you know, how, how do they do that? If at all, keep it simple. So maybe focus on some really important safety wellness like food and nutrition, exercise, concussion. I mean, we were talking about concussion before the state of Connecticut even made all this education mandatory. But the things, you know, healthy relationships. Um, keep it simple. Maybe do a half day program. Mm -hmm. And make it very relevant, I think, to the children. So I th one of the things that again, Terry's done a great job of, is getting the feedback from the children at the end of the day. And they, they are very honest about the things that they think are applicable to their lives, the things that they enjoyed, and the things that they like to see again. So getting that student input is 
really important and I think your suggestion earlier Terry about having a committee and have students on the committee to help guide what some of those topics are is really important. It also provides the school with further information that if it's not covered in Wellness Day and the kids are saying this is an issue it's something that the school needs to take action on and really provide some more educational opportunities for them. So we do get some of that out of the feedback and you know whether it be in small pockets and whether you do it in, in advisory as you follow up or through health classes having multiple exposures to some of these lessons is really important. Mm -hmm. And the school nurse has always been involved with presenting programs as well so all the schools will have a school nurse they could bring them in um, for discussing possible topics as well. And each school may have different priorities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which is, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, okay, but I, you know, I, I'm not a PTO member, but I have a daughter who is, mm -hmm. and she's very involved. She's going to go, be Mom, afraid to please. Take <laughs> <laughs> because it's good for the kids, you know? It's great for the kids, and the kids do value it. They really do. And I think the presenters feel very valued after, and as much as the children get out of it, the presenters get that much out of it as well. They're giving back to the kids and seeing how the kids are receptive to their messages and ultimately helping. When you tell the stories about all of the children who have either dramatically saved a life or over time just by intervening that the impact, people want to do it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Does anybody else anywhere do this? Not that I'm aware of. I'm sure they have some sort of safety wellness something going on, but I'm not aware of any other school that has it like we have it. Wow. So. Gosh. This is amazing. <laughs> but maybe after this segment there'll be like a <laughs> Terry Savino Day. I think yes. that's a great idea. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, I mean, you have done such a wonderful job. You really, really have. You've used all of your skills, really, and, and you've needed all of your skills to, to put this together. And, I, and, you know, and the cooperation of the, of the school district and the administration. And, um, I mean, I kept seeing you through this, that whole day. You know, you were right there. I like to learn about the things too. It's, it's a learning experience for all of us. And they open it up to board members, so yeah. the board members will come in and observe as well. So it's, it's been a great day. It is. A good day for the kids. And you've got one coming up, and it's April, it's on a Thursday? April 9th. April 9th. It's on a Thursday this year. You had it on a Wednesday last year, right? We did. Um, they go on vacation the week after that, so they decided to make it the Thursday. And Friday, you have an activity that day or something. I think we, I think we basketball might have mania a or something. Um, no, or I think we might have a half. Day. Oh, half day. day. Yeah. So we decided to push it to Thursday. And and that's you know I wish I could be there, but I can't this year. But um, wow, this is this is amazing. You know, I, I think back to when I was I was very involved when my kids were in school. Um, and I think I told you I even ran for the school board and all of that kind of thing. If something like this had been available, if somebody had done something like this and I could pull all the information together and make it happen, what a difference it would have made. Uh, you know, and, and I think it also helps the relationship uh, with the parents, gets parents more involved because they see what their school district and their PTO are doing, which can be kind of a challenge, you know, to get those those busy, busy parents involved in the PTO. Have you noticed a difference since you started this? More involvement with, with parents? It certainly takes parent involvement um, for this activity. They run the entire break room for all of our speakers. Um, I don't get involved in that at all. The PTO takes care of organizing that. They help us sign people in and, and sign out for the day. And then we have the students that will actually bring the presenters down to their classroom. And then in the library we have, where, where the Terry Broder Association was, we have several PTO moms in there. Some of them are, are nurses at Yale that will do some of the poison table or the concussion table. So it does take probably mm -hmm. about 15, I would say 15 parent volunteers um, every year that, that help out on that day. Wow. That's, that's pretty amazing. I'm just, you know, obviously uh, because I was there last year and saw this happen, uh, it impressed me. 
It really did. And it impressed me for several reasons. But the biggest impression was the kids. They were thoroughly enjoying it and loved telling me what they were learning. And, and uh, you know, I was, you know, we were all interactive with what we were sharing with the kids. But the part that I loved the best was saying, what was your favorite part? What did you learn, to, especially next to me with the eyes and everything? <laughs> they just couldn't wait to tell me. And then it, uh, one of them, this little girl, she said, uh, I think I have trouble with my eyes. And I think I'm supposed to go to a doctor and find out. <laughs> it was just so cute, you know? It's just this awareness that uh, you normally would not see, you know, or hear. It was just, uh, you, you've got to start thinking about the students in your town, okay? And even if it's a couple of things, even if it's, uh, you know, two focuses to start, um, call your school administrators and your school nurse and, um, Start doing something because it's our responsibility to to help our young people learn what they need to learn in order to have a better life. And uh, it's just, I just love what you guys do. I really, really do. If somebody is serious and they're watching, um, what I did was I put down Marine's contact information. So you would be the contact person that they would call and then whatever they wanted to do then you would you would say um, that would be a question for Mandy or that would be a question for Terry or um, would someone even be able to come that day for a little bit and see what's going on? I think we would be more than open to have somebody come and observe and um, try to grow that in their community or at their school because uh, what Terry started you know five or six years ago has just kind of grown every year and um, I think it's just really mm -hmm. part it's just embedded in part of our middle school and um, you know and if you have that many kids that are exposed to all these things for what five years mm -hmm. in a row mm -hmm. yeah and even if you just reach one of them and it makes a difference somewhere and and you know on that day that you're reaching a lot more than just one kid so well it's pretty obvious yeah. you know that you have reached uh, some of these kids well all of these <laughs> kids but when I saw the TV cameras and um, that young woman that came in with a TV camera and these two young boys sitting on the couch actually her nephews okay, these were Mandy's two nephews yeah. mm -hmm. And they, they represented themselves so well. They did. And I was sitting there listening yeah. to the story, and I went, oh my God, mm -hmm. that is, you know, that's amazing. And the interesting thing about that story is that while to everybody else it is and was a very big deal, you know, the one brother's choking, the other one just immediately without thinking gets up and gives him the Heimlich. And, he didn't really think much of it. It was just, well, that's what I had to do. And yeah. his mother, my sister, said, where did you learn that? And he said, oh, safety and wellness day. <laughs> he just didn't even and think about it. It was just on carried on mistake. and yeah. move on. Let me finish. Yeah. That says a lot. It does. You know, it really, really does. And uh, so you should be very, very proud of what you've done. And, uh, and it's just, uh, I know I keep saying this, don't I? I keep <laughs> repeating myself how... Uh, how amazed I really am, but I congratulate you all um, on helping your young people in your community. And I love the involvement of everyone coming together. Absolutely. It's a community, community spirit for sure. Yeah. And even though uh, your youngest is now uh, gone out of middle school and gone on, yeah. you're still participating. You can't get rid of me, I guess. <laughs> I think this is her baby yes. and her creation and it's probably it would be a hard thing just mm -hmm. to let go and say here here's this piece of paper and you know you keep doing it when she puts so much time and and effort into it her along with her husband and the rest of the school and the community mm -hmm. and um, I'm I for one am grateful that she didn't just say here you know here you it's go. your turn <laughs> um, good luck yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
it's, uh, I can see it now. You can become a, um, a safety wellness uh, for your children day consultant. Mm -hmm. Going there you around go. the country, yeah, go. go around the country okay, and okay. start up these, <laughs> these programs because it's, uh, I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> Can't you? Yeah. And if you want to help, contact Maureen. Uh, we're going to have her contact information. And there it is. That's Marina. She will, uh, she will, she will help you out on this. So, um, so here you are. Okay, you're moving on up into high school with your youngest. And are you involved in the high school too, doing some things? I'm actually on the Rams Booster, um, which is a a group that's focused on making things for the uh, athletics at the high school. I was on the music booster because my daughter's a senior in high school moving on to college uh -huh. and my son is a freshman. So I am involved in the Rams boosters right now. I haven't gotten involved with the PTO yet but that's because you're still I involved work with this PTO. So that's yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and working but, at the same time of yeah. course you know. We women today carry a heavy load you know and um, so are you also looking forward, Mandy, to, uh, to continue being part of this process and just... Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen the benefit. I've been at the middle school, whether it be as principal or the associate principal, this is my seventh year. So I've been part of this um, since its inception. And I think, again, the impact that it has on our children is so great. And like you said, bringing the community together because our school community as represented in the town too is so important um, and I do see a lot of the feedback and it continuing to be an evolution and not to scare Maureen but maybe eventually we can have a parent component to it too where you know, we do offer some workshops for parents for some of those more um, pressing topics that come up. We were talking about that today and the internet safety piece and we have an expert who's coming to talk about it but maybe that would be the n next natural step is to provide something for parents afterwards on really some of those current pressing issues for our kids because like everything but especially education student learning is about a partnership not just with the community but with parents so we would like them to get more exposure to what's going on and be a part of the learning and the experience for their kids. So Maureen, Absolutely. that's her next part. She's going to have to start doing some evening things for parents mm -hmm. on that day. <laughs> and she's sitting there going, okay, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say that, um, that I wish you the very, very best of luck. You are surrounded by some very strong, involved people. And, um, and it's great to have that kind of help to, yeah, to carry very on. very big shoes to fill. Yes. But, um, <laughs> yes. I don't feel like she jumped out of the shoes. She's kind of Which is a good part, partnered up. Yes. Yeah, we're like a three-legged race right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm picturing that. Mm -hmm. So um, now where are you as far as your children? Do you have, are you going to be going on to? I won't be doing this for that long. I only have two more years in the middle school. I have two that are in the high school in 10th grade and then a 7th grader. So okay. I'm going to have to find another willing nurse or somebody that's committed to safety and wellness day um, and pull them in in the next year or two. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because you've got to continue mm -hmm. this. Yeah. This, is, this is just an amazing program. And I think you guys should be picked up by um, by national media and spread the word. <laughs> <laughs> really do. Uh, of course, I'm a little biased, not because I live in Old Saybrook or anything, but because I've seen what this program can do. And I just I appreciate so much the fact that you came onto our show today and shared uh, shared your story. And I appreciate it very much. And. Um, it's going to be another great safety wellness day mm -hmm. <laughs> in Old Saybrook, Connecticut. And um, I want to thank you, too, for, for joining us today. And as I normally do, I like to say a quote that kind of connects with the subject matter today. So what I did was um, I came up with a quote about giving what you have to share. And this is from Margaret Mead. 
And she said, I personally measure success in terms of the contributions an individual makes to her or his fellow human beings. And that's human beings of all ages. So thank you, Margaret Mead. Um, and thank you, Terry Savino, Mandy, uh, Ryan, and Maureen Copas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It was You're a great welcome. show. Thank you for having Thank us. You. My you. pleasure. Um, and I'd like to remind you too that um, contact me and let me know what kind of show you would like to see. If you know some programs out there that you want to spread the word. I know we've got some shows coming up uh, about the Blues Festival in Mystic, which is going to be great. Um, and we've had some other organizations like this one. And just let me know, okay? And give me some ideas, and we will have a show, okay? And uh, I look forward to having you back again. So in the meantime, stay safe. It's getting a little warmer, so I don't have to say stay warm quite as much anymore. And we will see you next time. <laughs>